Hi guys, welcome to MS Power Automate. In today's video, we will learn how to create a dynamic selectors for desktop applications. In today's scenario, we will automate an account creation. For each of the account created, I am required to extract the account ID. As you can see here, I already have an existing script where I run an application followed by launch the Excel. Afterwards, I will then read the Excel worksheet to get all the records that I need to input inside the Contoso invoicing application. So let me open the Excel file. Total, I have about eight records that I need to create. All right. And then if I open my Contoso invoicing app, I will require after launch this application, I will navigate to account and then I will input the account name, primary contact, contact email. After that, I click save and then extract the ID. Okay, so let's start off by populate text field in window. Over here, I will click add UI element. Okay, so from here, let me bring this forward. All right, so I want to input inside account name. All right, and I also want to add primary contact field and also the contact email field and I click done okay but over here I need to reselect the first one which is the account name okay so let me reselect again okay if I go here I rename this as account name. Primary contact and email. Okay, so from here, right? Just want to let you know, at some of some some application, it may happen where after you open the application and then you navigate to other other tabs or other uh, areas right the naming of the app may change maybe they can have contoso invoicing dash accounts contoso invoicing dash records so if we have this scenario right anything that we click here it may fail because over here if i click edit if I'm using this name because over here the select is using the name, the name of let me expand this Contoso invoicing. So you actually only look for Contoso invoicing name. If I have dash record, it will only work for record. Anything else that is not beyond the record tab, it will fail. So, how can we make this more dynamic? Number one. Is either we change this to contains and then we use contoso invoicing or you can uncheck this and we determine based on the process all right so if you click update you can you can change here or you can also do one more where you reselect a, and recapture you select this window okay and then over here i can also add contains contoso invoicing so in this case let me shift this upward i will look for this first one if the first one cannot i will based on this uh based on the process name it will work as well okay then number two under account name right since we are using a uh, desktop application is a bit different from uh web browser for web browser we are required to inspect the element but for desktop application anything that you select or add, add or added in the ui element it will automatically populate all the uh, all the selectors inside this builder so is you can customize this without even going to the inspect option right so from here it's using an ID object editor, right? This one is just the 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 
the navigation portion but the things that i want to look at is the edit text box because i'm looking at this field so it's from, from parent child sub child 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 right so from here edit text box here they are looking at text account name okay so maybe in some cases it's not 192 we can also change to contains text account name the ID and then if we click save let's try over here current item So it works too. Right? Okay. And then that's for part one. Now we want to make it to ensure that um, we did not accidentally click somewhere else. So we're going to add a UI element to click on this account. So click UI element in window. Okay, so from here. I will add UI element and will select account. Okay, you can see here why I got two because the first time here I already changed all the selectors here, right? I already updated the the selector to be more dynamic whereas over here it is still determined as the default invoicing app so that's why it is not able to detect this so it will create a new one all right so over here um let me take a look how can i add a ui element within this section Right, so basically, I can just drag, drag it out to wherever I want. Okay, so that means I, there's no need for me to, to, uh, to recreate and or redo all over again. So from here, let me account that. So from here, let me delete this, and if I go back here, click edit. If I scroll down to accounts, over here is actually looking for the asterisk, right? We can also use contains. And then we check this option. Click update. Close. Over here, we reselect again. Okay, so now let's populate for the other field. Account name, primary contact, and the email. Assuming maybe you want to rename this contact email, you will automatically rename this field. Okay, so let's double check, make sure everything is in sync. Okay, we save. Now we are going to extract this ID. Before we even extract the ID, we also need to click on the save button, right? And also, even we before we even write into uh, create to to populate the the account name. I also missed out one step where we need to create a new record. So let me add a UI element again. Add a new record and save. So over here is already added. Let me quickly bring this forward.
Okay, so now we are going to extract the invoice, I mean the account ID. So over here, we will use get details of the UI element. And from here, I will add a UI element and I will get this ID. Okay. What's wrong? Okay. All right. So from here, let me rename this variable as account ID. Okay, and I click save. So from here, if you take a look by clicking on the edit option, okay, over here. Let me explain this. If I navigate to line number five, text. I'm using the ID. In some cases, it may also happen where this name field is checked, 106. So that means when I created a new account, this ID will become 1007. And then this will not work because it will forever remain 1006, right? This is a fixed value, right? So how can we uh, make this more dynamic? One way. Instead of we change all of this option, we can just uncheck this. We make use of the ID. Okay, so from this ID here, we can use contains. Okay, and then from here, in fact, over here, let me go back again. In fact, there is no need for you to change this 192. From my understanding, ID will always be a fix unless if you each time you run this ID is constantly uh, change the number constantly change, right? So then in this case, you can then um, remove the 192 DG and then you use a contains option. All right. So from here, let me double check. Okay, update and close. So from here, let me save. And then let me close all of this Windows application. Bring this forward. And a call ID. All right, now it has finished and completed. So um, for over here, I did not do anything with the account ID. Um, this is just to show you how we can make use of the dynamic selector. Um, in real life scenario, what you can do is we, of course, we're going to make use of this account ID to input it into somewhere else, maybe save into Excel file or, or other areas, right? Yep. So that's all for this exercise. So if you are keen to learn more, do remember to subscribe our channel as we have constant updates and tutorial videos on Microsoft Power Automate Desktop. Thank you.